Hi everyone, this is Sultan with Rex Theme, and in this video, I'll give you a quick overview of the plugin Product Fit Manager for WooCommerce. So let's get started. Product Fit Manager for WooCommerce is a powerful plugin that allows you to generate product feed for large marketplaces. You see, uh, when you own a WooCommerce store, it's always wise to promote your products on large marketplaces such as Google Shopping, Facebook Catalog, or even local popular marketplaces such as Trovaprezi in Italy, or Sinio in Poland, or maybe Virtualik in Germany, or whichever uh, marketplace you desire. The problem here is that each of these marketplaces has their own dedicated template for uh, creating and uploading product data uh, into their merchant center. Okay, so that's where Product Feed Manager for WooCommerce comes in. Uh, the plugin comes with pre-built feed templates for over 170 large marketplaces out there. Now, the best part of the plugin is that it's really simple to use and you can generate product feed in desired marketplace in just a few clicks real quick. So it's gonna save you tons of time and you can instantly generate the feed, upload it to your marketplace and start getting more sales right away. So let me give you a quick overview of the plugin and then I'll show you quickly how you can generate a basic product feed, all right? So as you can see, I'm on the dashboard and I have the plugin Product Feed Manager for WooCommerce installed. Once it's installed, you'll find the menu called Product Feed uh, on the dashboard menus. So let me click on it and it will take me to this page. This is the page called All Product Feeds. Here, all the product feeds that you've generated will be listed. From here, you can actually directly view the feed or download it, or you can copy the link from here, or you can edit the feed if you need to make any changes, all right? Next, you can see the option called Add New Feed. This is where you click if you want to generate a brand new product feed for a desired merchant of yours. I'll show how to use this later on in the video. Next, you can see the option called Category Mapping. If I click on this, it'll take me to this page. Now, what Category Mapping does is it, it allows you to submit an alternate value for your existing categories in WooCommerce. So you can see these are all the categories I have in my WooCommerce store and this is the field where I want the alternate value. So let's say there's a category called all games but in the feed I want it to say gaming. So I'll just write gaming here. All right. So then if I save this category map and then I use this in the product feed uh, instead of all games the category will result in gaming. Well, obviously this sounds a bit confusing now, but I will create a complete uh, tutorial to explain how you can use category mapping uh, properly for any margin type. For Google, if I type in something, it gives me suggestions from Google categories, all right? So uh, for Google, we have already included the default values here. Uh, so you can choose the right category from here once you're generating feed for Google. But if it's for any other margin, you can just manually type it and not select any values from the dropdown and you, those values will be used in generating the feed. So for now, I'll leave it to this much. Uh, I'll include a link to the guide for category mapping in the description so that you can get a detailed guide on this and use it completely for your advantage, all right? Next is the option called Google Margin Settings. So basically we have this option called Google AutoSync uh, where you can directly send your product feed to your Google Merchant Center from your WordPress site, all right? For that, this is the place where you configure it. You need to collect this data from your Google Merchant Center, input it here and uh, submit the value. So we have a video tutorial for this and we also have a written guide for this. So I'll leave a link to the guide in the description below so you can find out exactly how you can auto-sync your product uh, to your Google Merchant Center. Next is the settings page. So once you're in the settings page, initially you're in the general tab. Uh, here you'll find the basic things such as a uh, link to documentation, link to our support. Uh, you can rate our plugin and you can share on social media. Next, if you move on to the merchants tab, this is a very important step. Uh, since we support hundreds of merchants, when you are generating feed, giving all of them as an option, gets difficult for you to look for your required margin. So what you do is you come to this tab and only enable the margins that you want to come up in the list when generating the feed. Let's say you just want to generate product feed uh, for best list, all right? And you don't want anything else. So what you can do is you can disable all of them uh, and just keep best list enabled, all right? 
and then when you generate a product feed uh, when choosing the template you'll get the option for best list only so when you choose best list there you'll find the template for that okay next you can see there's the controls tab in the controls tab there are several important options which you can use such as uh, setting up the product batch now remember product batch does not mean the number of products that will be generated products per batch means how many products will be added to each iteration all right so in most cases i'll tell you not to bother with this uh keep it to 50 if your website is really highly configured you can increase this and it will increase the speed of the feed generation all right clear batch uh is important when you uh let's say generate a feed for some reason your feed generation has stopped you have to cross out uh, the page so what you can do is come here click on clear batch so that any garbage data generated at that time should be cleared and then you can newly generate a product feed now there are more uh, more options here you can see you can integrate it to facebook pixel uh, you can enable error log for the plugin uh, you will find some options to add custom fields uh, these custom fields can be useful for different marketplaces uh, i will have separate videos to explain when you can use these custom fields effectively uh, we have the option to fix json LD structured issue which most people face when promoting on google with variable products okay and uh, we also have option to allow private products and we allow people to uh, clear the cache uh, for the plugin when generating feed okay so these are the basics i'll have separate videos to explain these things in more details uh, let me just move on to the next one you can see there's the video tutorials tab here you'll find our playlist posted you can play from here and continue on to get a tutorial of the whole plugin and then you can see the system status tab this will tell you if your uh, system is optimized for feed generation and proper promoting of products as you can see in this one in this is my test server and the upload limit is very low usually it's recommended to have 64 mb just like that all the other things are tested if your php version is backdated this will detect it and you can uh, get an idea from this and start using an advanced version uh, and all the other information are here and this is the part which is called logs if you enable error log from the controls menu let me just show you where if you enable this one then every activity you do with the plugin will be stored in this logs so in case anytime you face an issue uh, you can always come to the log and find out the error log you can reach out to us and we can identify the issue but in most cases this is not used because uh, our plugin right now is very stable and most people do not face any issues with the plugin okay uh, next you see the support tab uh, once you click on this one it will take you to a website uh, to open support tickets and next is the license tab uh, this is where you enable the license as you can see i've enabled my pro license over here okay uh, you also have to do the same when you purchase the pro version of the plugin now now that i've explained all the basic menus here let me just quickly show you how you can generate a quick product feed just click on add new feed and it will take you to this page where you create a brand new product feed let me just name it new feed as this is for test purpose and next there's this options where uh, you need to configure certain options here for example with this option you can choose what products to include in the feed you can use certain types of filters or you can include all published products i'll just leave it to all published products for now the refresh interval is basically uh, auto update feature for the feed itself so let's say you've set up a feed and you set the refresh interval to hourly. So right after generating the feed, let's say you went to a product and edited uh, certain details within the product. So if you have the hourly refresh interval enabled, then every hour the feed will update itself. And if you have made any changes within the products, those changes will be updated within the feed. The same goes if you go for daily, then every day, uh, once the feed will be updated on its own and it will take the updated data that you have uh, shop after you make changes to it so that's the purpose of refresh intervals for variable products if you just uh, don't want just the variance but you also want a parent product feed to be generated you can enable this uh, normally you do not need this in most marketplaces but for some you do such as ebay requires you to submit a parent product but for google shopping you do not so depending on the marketplace you choose this option include product variance if you enable this then product variations will be included if you do not enable this the feed will not include any variants from variable products okay next is include variation product name 
So let's say you have a lot of variable products in your store and you want to include the variant terms in the product title. That time you use this option. Next is the include pa parent product for group products. So when you group products together, you might want to include a parent product within the uh, product feed for those group products. So you can enable this one at that time. Exclude or invisible or hidden products. Some people have hidden or invisible products in the store. If you want to exclude them, you just can enable it as yes. And then there's the option to include analytic parameters. If you want to include UTM parameters to the links of each and every product in the feed, then you can enable this. Uh, once you enable this, you'll get the fields to input the UTM uh, parameter values. Okay. Once you include these values, the UTM parameters will still be included to the link of your products. Now comes feed configuration. Here you just choose the margin you want to generate feed for. Okay. So let's just uh, choose Google Shopping for now. Once you choose the merchant, if you scroll down, you'll see all the mandatory attributes that are required to submit to your required merchant will appear here. Now, almost all of them will be configured by default, but some of them will not be. For example, uh, Google product category will not be configured because to find an exact value for this, you first need to set up category mapping. For Google Shopping, it is mandatory to use category mapping. If you want, you can watch uh, two of my guide videos I have created for Google Shopping, where in one I explain how you can use category mapping for Google Shopping, and in the other one I explain how you can generate a complete product feed uh, for Google Shopping. Okay, so I'll be including the links in, uh, for those two videos in the description. And you'll find that there are other things such as the brand name or the MPN not configured. Uh, you also have to configure them here. Uh, depending on how you include the value in your commerce store. I'll, I'll obviously create separate videos to show you in different ways you can include the brand name or the MPN, uh, maybe using custom tools to our plugin or maybe using attributes or whichever way you find suitable. Now once I have the feed configured, all I have to do is scroll up and click on publish. Now once you click on publish, you'll see the feed will be generated. Okay. Once you generate the feed, you can click on view feed and here you can check out how the feed was generated. Or you can, you know, copy this link and submit it to your mar marketplace if they allow you to submit the link. And uh, you'll find the option to download the feed, which you can then submit to your desired marketplace for whom you generated the feed. All right. So that's it. That's how easily you can use Product Feed Manager for WooCommerce. So that's it. That's how easily you can use Product Feed Manager for WooCommerce. I believe by now you have already understood where all the options are around this plugin and you have a certain idea of how to use the plugin to generate product feed for your desired marketplace. So in my next few videos, I'll start uh, giving guides on using uh, every little options within the plugin and I'll give you guides on different marketplaces so that you can generate complete uh, product feed for those marketplaces. All right. So thanks for watching. Uh, if you have any confusion with the plugin ever, you can always knock our support team and we'll be there to help you out. Thank you for watching this video. I'll see you in one of my future videos. Take care.